What's up, Rocket family? So today we're kicking off fall DIYs on my channel. I know it's a bit early, but it takes some time to craft. So hopefully this gives you a head start on some ideas. Let me know down in the comments below what you're most excited for when it comes to fall. For me, it's all about that cold sweater weather. With that being said, let's begin. For our first DIY, you're gonna get a car wash sponge from Dollar Tree. You're gonna start cutting the pieces of the sponge to make small little squares. They don't have to be perfect whatsoever. They can even be larger squares. It just depends what it is you're going to use as the base for this project. Now place the pieces of sponge that you cut up into a bowl that you don't mind getting paint inside of. What you're going to do is you are going to pour paint on top of the sponge pieces and then use your hands to go ahead and rub that paint inside of the sponges. You probably want a glove on hand to do this. These are supposed to be apple chunks so use whatever color you want for the color of your apple chunks. I'll be putting my sponge pieces inside of this metal bottle cap from Dollar tree you can also use the aluminum pie pans from Dollar Tree if you want to I'm making fake apple pies last year I made some fake pumpkin pies I want some apple pies to go along with that so I got some model magic from Dollar Tree these are little one ounce packages so what I did is I got a big chunk together and now I'm just gonna roll it out using a non-stick rolling pin make sure everything you're using is not stuff you actually use for real food so I have a rolling pin just for my fake sweets a cutting board for my fake sweets knives for my fake sweet. So now I'm just going to take a scissor and I'm cutting off little strips that I'm going to use to start creating the look of my crust. I then start to place these pieces on top of my fake pie, pushing it into the metal tin and then just cutting it if it's a little too long. For the crust that is around the tin, I use my fingers to just kind of pinch it, creating what looks like little waves so it looks more realistic. I waited 24 hours for the Model Magic to completely dry and then I painted it. I used a color called Golden Glow by the brand Folk Art. Finally, I got some real cinnamon and I used my finger to start rubbing the cinnamon on top of the Model Magic and this gives it a super realistic look. It gives you the color that you need. I'm not always the biggest fan of using real ingredients on my fake food. However, cinnamon is a deterrent to a lot of bugs and mice, so it's not like they're gonna come to the fake food and try to eat that. So when all is said and done, I have these super adorable fake apple pies, which is perfect for my fall decor. And I love to do fake sweets because I mean, how many pumpkin DIYs do you have to see? At least this is something a little bit different. Speaking of fake sweets, right now Dollar Tree has these fake cherry pie squishies. You're gonna find them in the toy section. You can use these to make more realistic looking cherry pie. Now, obviously it's not gonna look super realistic, but it's gonna look better than it does before. So what I did is I went in with that golden glow paint that I told you guys about, and I painted over the face and the crust of these pie slices. After one layer dries, I do another layer to make it more opaque where you can't see the face that's on the top of the slice. I got a sponge from Dollar Tree, I ripped a piece off and I dip it into a darker brown paint. I then start to stipple this color on top of the crust. You want at least two different colors on the crust, one that's a lighter color and one that's a darker color because it's going to make it look more realistic. The cherries are a little too bright red for me so I go in with a darker red color and I use it to just kind of make this look a little bit more realistic. Again, obviously it's not going to look super realistic because it is a squishy toy, however making the cherries look a little bit darker it makes it look better next up I got some Mod Podge with a gloss finish Dollar Tree does carry smaller versions of this and I just paint over the cherries with that to give it a glazed look and I do this two times so I wait for one layer to dry and then I go over it yet again here is the before of those cherry slices and here is the after. I absolutely love this. I decided to place some fake cherries on top of my slices to make it look even cuter. I just think this is adorable and it's so easy to do this because you're not doing much beside painting them. What is holiday decor without a tear tray? Dollar Tree right now is selling these party trays that are perfect for this project. You wanna make sure you get some candle pillars as well, and this is what's gonna give you the height you need for your tear tray. So I'm using some E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue just so that it dries more quickly to start creating the height I need for my tear tray. So I use two candle pillars at the bottom, and then I just use one at the top, and then two trays total. We're going to 
dry brush on top of our tear tray. This is really going to give it that look of a tear tray you see on Pinterest. You need a paintbrush for this, the kind you use on the walls, and Dollar Tree's paintbrushes are perfect for this. You dip your brush into some paint and then you wipe a good amount of it off just by gliding the brush on a piece of paper or something. So your brush is relatively dry and then you start to create light strokes on your tray to look like wood grain. I highly recommend using different shades of the same color or colors that complement each other. I did different shades of brown and then some white paint. You can see that this starts to look more aged and almost like real wood. I highly recommend though using three shades of the same color so you'll have a light, medium, and dark shade of that one color. After I go in with the brown shades, I then go in with my white paint and that's just the final color that I use and I'm left with this beautiful tear tray that definitely looks like those wooden tear trays you buy at Kirkland's and I love that it's a decent size because most Dollar Tree DIY tear trays are not very big. This is one of my favorite DIYs I've done lately. You want to get a broom handle from Dollar Tree. You're going to remove the top off of the handle revealing a hole. Next up you need some tape. I prefer masking tape for this. You're going to start wrapping the tape around your broom handle. You're not looking for perfection here if you start to get creasing inside of the tape that's actually a good thing for this project. Now you want to get some greenery from Dollar Tree, floral, completely up to you. And you are going to take those stems and push them through the hole that we created when we removed the handle off of the broom. And you want to make sure that there's enough where that hole is pretty full and those pieces are tight inside of there. Once you've done that, you're going to take more of your tape and you're going to bring it up to just the very bottom portion of your floral pieces. That way the top blends in with the bottom. Now take some brown paints and start to paint over your masking tape. I used two different shades of brown to try to give this a more realistic look. Now you're going to need a planter from Dollar Tree as well as some stones or rocks from Dollar Tree. You can also get them somewhere else. You might be able to get a bigger pack for cheaper. What you're going to do is you are going to start filling up your planter with the rocks. And I recommend actually getting some paper towels or newspaper and using that as well when you're pouring in the rocks. That way you don't need as many bags of rocks. You're going to use the rocks to weigh down the bottom as well as keep that handle in place. You're left with this beautiful fall tree which is so easy to make and inexpensive when you know the price of these things when you buy them inside of stores like I've bought things like this before at Target and it really is pricey for something like this especially at this size I made something like this similar before on my channel what I decided to do with the one I made was attach some of the apple picks from Dollar Tree so I just used zip ties to attach them to the greenery that was already on the tree that I previously made and then I cut off one of the apples from the two picks that I had and I just zip tied the apples on their own to the tree because I only had two picks total so I needed the apples to go around the place so I made a little apple tree this is so easy to do you guys and I'm telling you you save so much more money making it yourself than buying it. I also made a tree using these floral picks they're called silver dollars from Dollar Tree I love the way this one looks because it matches my decor the most for this DIY, I'm using the plastic coffee cups from Dollar Tree as well as a styrofoam ball, but cut in half. So you just want one side of it. Now you need spackle. Dollar Tree carries spackle, but if you watch my channel, I always repeat this because I don't know if it's a new person watching. I prefer to use DAP patch in paint. You get more bang for your buck just by buying a bigger container if you love to make fake sweets like me. I scooped some spackle inside of a container and then I poured some paint inside of the spackle. Now I didn't mix it completely, because I want the paint to be a little bit more saturated in some areas and then some of the white spackle to be popping through so I just get different shades inside of this mixture. You're going to need some icing tips for this. Dollar Tree does carry some but I prefer to get the metal kind because they're reusable. The Dollar Tree ones just aren't. So what you're going to do is you're going to scoop your spackle inside of a piping bag that has that icing tip and then you're going to get a paper plate or a plastic plate. You're going to place your styrofoam from ball on top of the plate and then start to squeeze out the spackle basically making this look like whipped cream I do these mug toppers all the time during the holidays because they're so fun to do and probably one of the more well-known fake sweets that I'm known for I just love to do it because it, it, it's adorable I've done this so many times on my channel but never like this where I don't entirely mix the paint and I really just like the look that it gives 
Now I got some cinnamon sticks, I cut them down and I pushed them through the spackle. I'm gonna make some fake dripping or fudge, I don't even know what you call this, um, to put on top of that. So I just need some Mod Podge to do that and paint. You wanna use more Mod Podge than you do paint and then you're just gonna mix the two together and start to drip that on top of your creation. Now the reason you wanna use Mod Podge is to get that glossy finish. If you just use paint, it's gonna dry pretty flat and it's not gonna look shiny. Then you just sprinkle some cinnamon on top of this and then finally I got some fake sprinkles. I'll link them down below for you guys that I decided to place on top of this because I really like the colors. They just scream fault. You wanna wait at least 24 hours for your spackle to dry. If you wait even longer, that's better. Now what you're gonna do is you are gonna cut whatever you use as the base for this off. So I used a paper plate. So I'm cutting off any paper plate that I don't need. If you wait at least a week for the spackle to completely dry, you're gonna be able to remove the rest of the plate off and then you'll just see the styrofoam ball underneath. So here is an example. The top one just has a styrofoam ball and the bottom one is the one that still has the paper. Then I went to Starbucks and I just got some of their coffee sleeves and that's what I'm gonna put around this. Now it doesn't slide perfectly on top of these plastic cups from Dollar Tree, so I had to cut it in the back right through the center and then glue it onto the cup. Now I made another mug topper. This time around I got the medium sized styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree. I cut it right in half and then I got these beautiful glasses from Dollar Tree recently. So I'm just gonna slide my styrofoam ball through the straw of that and then I'm gonna do the whole uh, thing again, just getting my spackle, creating that whipped look, adding my drizzle, the cinnamon sticks, the sprinkles, the cinnamon powder, you name it. I did the exact same thing, it's just on top of a lid. Here is an idea for making fake drinks. All you need to do is get some hand soap from Dollar Tree in a color that you like and then just pour it into your glass. You can keep it there all season long and nothing's gonna happen to it and then afterward you can just reuse it. You can keep it out even longer. I've done this before, making fake Zelda potions and I had them sitting out for three years and nothing happened to the soap. It didn't start molding or anything. The soap just sat in some glass bottles and that was that. This is one of my favorite DIYs in this video. I love the way that they look. I ended up painting one of the cups orange on the top and the bottom, so you can always paint them to get a color you like. These things last forever. The white one you see here, I made that one last year. They last a very long time. Let's make something we can use in the kitchen. I'm gonna be using two of these organizers with lids from Dollar Tree, as well as two of these serving trays. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue those two organizers together. And then on top of the organizers, I'm gonna glue down one of the serving trays. I then place a serving tray on the front of that. And basically, I'm just kinda of using this as a coffee bar. So I put some coffee syrups on the top of this. And then I got these glass jars from Dollar Tree recently. I absolutely love them. They're some of my favorite things I've ever found at Dollar Tree. Well, I'm just putting some things for coffee inside of there. So I did ground cinnamon in one of them. I did um, powder creamer in another, and then sugar in the final one that I used in this. And it's just so easy to do. I mean, it was four Dollar Tree products right there and I'm just gluing three of them together. Four of them cost $5. I like the way that it looks and I just think it's a perfect thing to have inside of your kitchen for fall time if you have like a coffee bar or you can just use it for putting fruits on top of pretty much anything you want. You can even use this in a bathroom if you have that type of space. In the Dollar Tree Plus section, you can find these pie garlands right now for $3. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a few of the pies off of the string. Then I got this pillow cover from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue some of the pie pieces on the front of the pillow cover. You can always sew them in place, but hot glue is it's fine for something like this. When you open up the pillowcase, there is some creasing going on. So I just glue the back and the very tip of the pies on the side first. Then I get my pillow in and finish gluing it in place. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't glue it over a crease and then I end up with those creases permanently there on my pillowcase. These are so fun and they go really well with those pumpkin pie slices you see. I made those last year and I'll share with you guys how I did that toward the end of this video. 
they just look so freaking cute. I love this. The Dollar Tree Plus section recently got in these little boxes that have floral inside of them. Now, I recommend getting two of them and gluing them together by using wood glue. I have done things like this, exactly like this, in the past before using Dollar Tree products, and it's so much cheaper to buy just two of them already made and glue them together, and it's easier to do. Back in the past, I've used crates to glue them together, pieces of wood from Dollar Tree to glue a box together, and then you have to buy the floral, and you need quite a bit of floral to make it look full. It's cheaper to do this. So there are some benefits to the Dollar Tree Plus section. There are things that are easier to just buy them than it is to DIY them. I decided to take a wooden DIY ladder from Dollar Tree, painted white, and then glue it to the front of this. I went with Hello Autumn. It's just to make it scream fall a little bit more. I put some fairy lights from Dollar Tree inside of this to really make it glow. Now I'm making a tablescape with this, so to add to my table, I got these pumpkins from Dollar Tree for $5 in the plus section, another great buy. And this time around, I'm just gonna take some of this rhinestone trim. I got it from Hobby Lobby. It's $2.99, but I got it 40% off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue it. I'm just gonna make some glam pumpkins with this. So I just glue the trim all around my pumpkin. I had two of them and I placed them on the sides of my little wooden box and now I have this beautiful tablescape the boxes with the two pumpkins were $20 which is a really inexpensive price when it comes to creating a seasonal tablescape moving right along for this project you're gonna need a planter from Dollar Tree as well as some styrofoam I recommend getting styrofoam rounds and gluing them to the inside of your planter the reason you're gonna need this is because you're gonna get the pumpkins from Dollar Tree the metal ones right now they have these for five dollars you can always get the ones that are dollar and 25 cents you just need a few of them what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push them through the styrofoam and then fill my planter up with some rocks I have so many rocks from Dollar Tree already you don't need a lot of rocks you just need enough that if you stick this outside it's not gonna blow away on you next up I'm gonna zip tie another one of those metal pumpkin stakes to this and then after I've done that I take a broom handle from Dollar Tree I push it through the styrofoam and then I zip tie the pumpkins to the handle that way they're nice and secure inside of there they're not gonna bend over backwards they're gonna stay in place then I fill the bottom up with some florals from Dollar Tree you can always just fill this up with rocks if you want to or put moss down there if you want to I just thought the flowers were a nice touch to this and you can push them through the styrofoam so they stay in place and that's how I made this pumpkin topiary of sorts I made one last year and I used the dollar 25 cent pumpkins from Dollar Tree so you can always do that as well if you don't have a Dollar Tree plus or you don't want to get the metal ones Dollar Tree recently got in these beautiful glasses. I knew I wanted to do some fake drinks with this. So I got this resin kit from Dollar Tree. What you do is you mix equal parts A and B together. I knew though I needed to mix the entire bottle of both A and B, so I didn't really have to do any measuring. Now I want to color this to make it look like well, what I want it to look like, fake apple cider. However, once it cured, it honestly looks more like a coffee to me I don't know kind of like apple cider and kind of like a coffee anyways I went and poured in my paint I mix it you're supposed to mix it for at least five minutes and then I poured it inside of the glass now this gets hot and so I recommend taking this out and putting it like outside or maybe in your garage as you wait for it to cure the glass doesn't explode but you know what I'm not a resin expert so I would just take it outside just in case it cracks the glass but I didn't I didn't experience that at all I just I'm not an expert and I just want to make sure that you guys are staying safe now when you do mix resin you do not want to do this without a mask on and you want the area to be well ventilated so open up your windows or do this outside now something I did that looking back on it I wish I didn't do I stuck the straw in with the lid right away I don't recommend putting the lid on I recommend just pushing the straw through there keeping it in place, and then after it's cured, go ahead and put the lid on. You'll be left with some fun fake apple cider or coffee, depending on the color that you did. It's really fun. I, I love this. I love fake sweets. You guys, you guys already know that. Fake food. I just like to decorate with it. Sometimes people are like, why? Why not? You don't live in my house. Let me be me. Dollar Tree recently got in these beautiful pompous 
fall picks. Now I was trying to think of something to do with them besides just sticking them inside of a vase. So I decided to use them to make a wreath. So what you'll do is you'll take your picks and you'll bend the bottom of them so that they start to kind of round out and create a wreath shape. So just like a circle and to attach them to each other, I use some zip ties. So I use a zip tie on the base and then I find a piece on the top part where the little, where the pompous is actually at. And I try to zip tie one of the pieces up there at the same time keeping it discreet so you don't see the zip tie I used six of these total and once I have them all tied up I then cut the zip ties and I just kind of play with it a little bit and you're gonna have to do that because if you don't it ends up looking like hair so you have to just kind of mess around with it to make it look like a wreath and once you got that done you're left with a really pretty wreath and you can add like pumpkins to this to make it really scream fall if you want to Dollar Tree recently got in these DIY wood framed pieces. I'm going to be gluing four of them together by using wood glue. Now there are little hooks on the back of this. I removed all of the hooks on the back of these except for two that are at the top and I left them there just in case I want to hang this. To make the piece sturdier, I got some craft sticks from Dollar Tree and I'm just gluing them to the back of the frames. This just really does a good job of making this sturdier like I said so when you're picking it up the frames are just gonna bend backwards and snap in half. Dollar Tree carries these little wooden pallets. I went ahead and bought six of them. I stained them and then I'm gluing some together. Then I take those pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them to the top of my frames. Now I used hot glue to do this but I recommend using a mixture of wood glue and hot glue. I only use hot glue for video purposes, but the reason why you want to use a mixture of both is because wood glue is going to make sure it goes nowhere, but hot glue is going to glue it down in the angle you want right away. So as you're waiting for the hot glue to dry, you just hold the pieces in place so they don't go anywhere. I'm going to hang a wreath on the front of this. So to do that, I just got a small little screw and I screw it into place. Then I hang my wreath right off of this. And this is just a window pane with like an awning on the front of it. I think that's what you call it. This is something I used to do a lot back in the day and I haven't done it in a very long time, but I wanted to do it because I felt like it worked really well for all of the fall decor that I made recently. It's easy to do and it's just a really fun piece especially if you love farmhouse decor. This is not a DIY, but something I want to share. Dollar Tree has this beautiful cheese board for $5 right now. It is perfect, especially if you're trying to bring something over to somebody's house for the fall season, or you're gonna have some people over. It's a decent size and it's just a gorgeous piece. It comes with a small little knife. I absolutely love it. So I wanted to share that in this video because it is a fall item and a fall item that I think is worth it. And you don't even have to DIY. After I DIY'd that tear tray that you guys saw, I found this one at after I DIY'd that tear tray that you guys just saw, I found this one at Dollar Tree for $5 and it is a score. I have purchased tear trays that look just like this from the Bullseye Playground at Target and they're much smaller than this one. I was expecting it to be the size of the one at Target. It is not, it is bigger and probably one of the, my most favorite things I've ever purchased at Dollar Tree. So to DIY this a little bit, I got these wood bead wreaths from Dollar Tree. One of them I could just place directly on top of the bottom tray but the top one I have to take my wreath cut it down so that I can take some of the beads off once I've done that I take the metal piece that is exposed and I wrap it around the other end so that I create a wreath again it's just smaller then I have to cut off that excess wire and these are called miter shears if you are a crafter you need these I will link them down below for you guys they make they make cutting things so much easier. Then I take that smaller wreath and I just place it on the upper tray. I use mainly Dollar Tree products to decorate the inside of my tear tray. They have this line called Birch and Vine right now with some gorgeous pieces like that little window pane that's from Dollar Tree. The lamb's ear is from Dollar Tree. The beautiful pumpkin you see right here is from Dollar Tree. They have some great pieces this year. So this tear tray I'm telling you guys if you can find it buy it. I'm not lying when I say it's 
a great piece for the price and it's bigger than the ones from Target. I love this. Now this one is smaller than the one I previously made, but the one I previously made, you cannot put anything too heavy on the top versus this one, you can put heavier things on the top. So if you don't feel like DIYing, you can buy it already made if you can find it. And you can always do the dry brush look on this too to make it look similar to the one I shared with you guys before. Now I have some DIYs I would like to reshare again just in case you haven't seen them. These are DIYs I've done in the previous years, but I think they're worth resharing, especially if you're new to my channel. And one of those is candy apples. You're gonna wanna pick up some glossy Mod Podge as well as paint. I'm gonna be going with a caramel look, so I'm using this paint that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now what you'll do is you'll take your paint and mix it into the Mod Podge. You kinda want a 50-50 ratio or if you can't get it exactly, I would say more Mod Podge than paint. Once I got a color that I like, I am then going to take some fake apples. Now I found the green ones from Dollar Tree and then the red ones I had to buy at Michael's. I'm also gonna be using some wooden dowels from Dollar Tree and I am going to cut them in an angle so I can poke them nicely through my apple. Quick shout out to the pink tree here on YouTube. I've shouted her out before, I'll link her down below, but every time I'm making fake food, she pops up a lot and she's very helpful to me. So I'm gonna link her down below for you guys. She is so awesome. I love her channel so what you'll do is you'll take your apple and dip it in your paint and glue mixture you want a nice even coverage so don't put the apple too close to the container that you're dipping it in and then just roll the apple around you want to make sure you have some parchment paper or wax paper on hand to place the apples on top of that way they're not going to stick and glue to whatever surface it is you're putting them on i did two layers on each apple of what's supposed to be caramel yes i say caramel now we're going to be adding some fake nuts on top of this the nuts is actually hamster bedding. It's Katie Cobb bedding. You're going to find this in pet stores, on Amazon. I recommend getting a smaller bag if you can because a little bit goes a long way. You'll want to wait about 20 minutes for your Mod Podge to get tacky. Then you'll be placing the cob on top of that. As you place the cob on top of the apple, you want to push it in a little bit with your hand. The reason why you want the Mod Podge to get tacky is so that the cob sticks. If the Mod Podge is still runny, the cob is going to fall off and take paint with it so you need that perfect tackiness to the Mod Podge. That's how I made these fake candy apples. Make sure if you have children to display this high so they can get to it. You don't want anybody yelling at you because you made them eat styrofoam apples. They look good though, don't they? They, they actually make me want a candy apple. This next project is inspired off of this garland that I saw at Michael's. It was $20 and even on sale, I know I can make this cheaper. So I went ahead and I picked up some felt from Michael's for 49 cents. You can buy felt at Dollar Tree. It, the only thing is you can't choose the colors that you get and the felt is really, really cheap. I picked up these pumpkin color felt pieces from Michael's and I'm cutting out triangles that are five inches long on the sides. Now this tan piece of felt that I purchased, I'm cutting out strips that are going to go on the top of the orange pieces of felt. Then I took white felt and I cut out little shapes that look like flowers, but really you can do any shape you want. I'm making pumpkin pie slices out of these. So I take two triangles and I glue them where the top of the slice is supposed to be. I then take the tan strip I cut out and I start to glue that to the top of my pie. And I'm doing the creases like I did with the dough. The best way to do this is put some glue down and then place your strip down and start to create those creases on top of the glue. Once the crust is down, I then cut off any excess felt. Then glue down your white piece, which is supposed to be the whipped cream. I wanted to give this a stitched look like I saw at Michael's, so I just went in with paint and I started to create that stitch look. And this is Warm Buff from Apple Barrel. We're gonna make those pumpkin spice mugs that were on the garland. To do that, I'm using this cream color felt, again from Michaels. Now you're just going to draw a mug on top of the felt. I already pre-made one, and I'm just using that to trace that shape on a bunch of pieces of the cream felt. The top of the Michaels pumpkin spice mug has something that looked like a pumpkin, so I use orange and brown felt to create that pumpkin. Now glue everything together and just like the Michaels one, I want to do the stitching look. So I use black paint to do this and then the warm buff paint on the top where the pumpkin is. 
there was a coffee cup on that garland I knew I wasn't going to be able to recreate. So I did my own thing. I got white felt and cut out the main base of my cup. Then I used the beige felt for the lid and the sleeve of my cup. Then I cut a little white circle that's supposed to be the label of the coffee cup. Glue everything together. The label I decided to paint a green circle on top of and I cut a tiny little pumpkin to glue to the front of that. And of course I did the stitching on this as well. I decided to make a round pumpkin pie that wasn't on the garland at Michael's. I traced two circles on the tan felt and cut out. I then traced a circle on the pumpkin colored felt and I made sure that this circle was smaller than the tan circles. I used the white felt to make the whipped cream and the tan felt to do the crust. So like I said, this is just a full pie. To hang the felt pieces, I'm using Dollar Tree Jute Cord. What I do is I wrap my felt pieces around the cord. So I have one piece in the front of the cord and one piece in the back of the cord. I glue most of the felt together except for the very top. I don't put anything there. That way I can move the felt pieces around freely. So you glue everywhere, pretty much everywhere at the bottom, but leave no glue at the top so that the pieces just move around. To hang this up, use command hooks and tie the cord around the hooks. This is actually staying above my bed, so I wanted to share with you guys how that looks, but obviously you can use this on a mantle, cabinet. I also decided to show it near all the fake sweets I made. It looks absolutely adorable. And the best part is this cost me $5 to make. It'll cost you around $6 if you don't have twine. So I made that garland and realized that I can make the cutest decorative pillows with these, and they're just smaller, pillows that are for decoration. So what you'll do is you'll get two pieces of felt again to be the back and front of your pillow. So I have that pumpkin color felt and I'm just creating a triangle to be a pumpkin slice. Now I glue both pieces of felt together but I leave the top open because I need to stuff cotton inside of there. I'm using actual cotton balls I got at Dollar Tree. I unraveled them and stuck them inside of the felt. You can get an old pillow. I just use this because this is what I had on hand. Once the cotton is inside, you can go ahead and seal off your pumpkin pie. Now I use the tan color again to make strips that I am going to use to create the crust, but I made sure that these strips were thicker because this is a bigger piece of pie. Of course, I got my white felt. I cut it out to make my little fake whipped cream, and then I did the stitching. If you actually want to use your sewing machine to sew this all together, go ahead and do that. That's completely up to you. Like I said, these are just decorative pillows. They're not meant to actually lay on top of. It's just nice looking. I put these on top of my bed near the garland. It looks so adorable. This is how it looks on the couch. Obviously, you can mess around with the way that they are on top of your couch, but these were so inexpensive to make, and they're absolutely adorable. Grab a three pack of aluminum pie pans from Dollar Tree. Put some glue on the rim of the pan and glue the lid on with the paper side facing up. I'm mixing two paints together to try to get a pumpkin pie color that I then paint on the lid. I don't worry too much about the edges because that will be covered up. Next up, I purchased some Crayola Model Magic from Dollar Tree. I roll the clay in my hands to get a snake shape. Once it's long enough, I pour some hot glue on the edge of the lid and then glue down the Model Magic. As I glue it down, I smush it into the lid. I then took a fork and started to make indents inside of the Model Magic to make it look more like dough. I just painted this with some paints I mixed together to create a dough-like color. If you want a shiny look to your pie, add a layer of glossy Mod Podge. I only did this to one of the pies I made. Next up, you're gonna need spackle. Dollar Tree carries spackle. If you do not need a lot, you can get it from Dollar Tree. But I recommend this Adapt Spackle. It's a lightweight spackle. You get more bang for your buck, and it's my favorite one to use when making fake sweets. You'll need some piping bags and icing tips. You can find these at Dollar Tree. Put your spackle inside of the piping bag and then squeeze this right on top of your pumpkin pie. The Mod Podge dries clear and you are left with these adorable fake pumpkin pies. They're so easy to do and you can make three of them for under $7. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, purchase four of these pumpkin hanging signs, as well as a broom. You're gonna remove your handle from the broom. Then remove the rope that is attached to the signs. 
I figure out the layout of how I want my pumpkins to be attached before gluing them. Then I start to add my glue. I want them in the perfect spots. I also make sure I leave at least five inches of broomstick showing at the bottom. To attach my pumpkins to the broomstick, I'm using a mixture of E6000 and hot glue. You wanna make sure that you're using a heavy duty glue because hot glue melts in high heat. So if by chance it's hot outside, you don't want it, the broomstick falling off of the pumpkins. I then like to use some E6000 on the sides of the broomstick. Now I purchased two round styrofoam pieces and a planter from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be gluing my styrofoam pieces to the inside of my planter by using some hot glue. You can really go with any shape that you like. Next up, you're going to push your broomstick through the styrofoam. You need the bottom to be weighted, especially if this is going outside. So I just use some Dollar Tree stones to weigh the bottom. On top of the rocks, I'm placing some moss that I got from Dollar Tree just because I thought that this would give it a nicer look. You can find some really cute floral pumpkin picks at Dollar Tree right now. I placed a few of them at the bottom of my planter. And finally, I just placed one line of rope on my planter. I just thought it would look pretty this way. That's how I made this substantial piece using Dollar Tree products. And you can keep the cost of this under $10. You can use this inside or outside. It's completely up to you. You guys are gonna love this. Pick up some square styrofoam pieces from Dollar Tree as well as one of their cube styrofoam pieces. I ended up cutting off about half an inch of the thicker cube styrofoam. Now I'm gonna be using some brown craft foam I got for 99 cents at Hobby Lobby. It's cheaper there, you get a bigger piece and you can actually find it. I'm tracing the sides, top and bottom of my square pieces of foam. I then cut those pieces out. I'm also using a white piece of craft foam for the cube shape. Same thing, I trace the sides, top and bottom and then cut those pieces with my scissor. Next up, I use hot glue to start attaching my craft foam to the foam pieces. You can use foam glue for this if you like. Sometimes Dollar Tree has it. I had leftover brown craft foam. I cut out pieces that are bigger than the cube but smaller than the squares. It's time to glue everything together. I start by attaching one of the squares and cube together. I then place those extra pieces of craft foam I cut out on top of the cube. And then I place my last piece of square foam onto the cube. I'm going to be using 3D dimensional fabric paint. I'm making cute decorative s'mores. I use the brown paint to define the graham crackers. I do the little lines that are in graham crackers and the little holes. If there are areas where foam is peeking through, I also use the paint to cover up these areas. Now Dollar Tree carries puff paint. You can use that, but I prefer 3D dimensional paint, which is very similar to puff paint. But the difference is, is it holds its shape. It remains 3D. I then use my black 3D paint to paint on cute little marshmallow faces. And I decided to do a chocolate drip. So I put the brown paint over the little craft foam that's supposed to be the chocolate and then bring it down to create the drip. I gave my s'mores cute little cheeks by painting them with a light pink paint. I made so many s'mores in different sizes. All you have to do is cut the Dollar Tree foam to get the size that you like. These are adorable. I love the way that they turned out. This is a DIY I did this Easter, but the reason I'm sharing it is because you can use the same technique to make pumpkin pie candles. Get some glass you like from Dollar Tree and make sure the bottom says nothing about being heat resistant. I'm using this glass pie dish and then this glass mug I got from Dollar Tree. I glued new wicks to the bottom of them. I used two in the pie one and then one in the mug one. Now I'm going to start with the pie one. I poured some orange candle wax inside of my pitcher and I am then going to pour that inside of my little pie bowl. And then I have to wait for this to completely harden. If you've seen me make candles on this channel, you know this technique. However, if you're new, you can make whipped wax that looks like fake whipped cream. So what you do is you're gonna take your wax and pour it inside of a heat resistant mixing bowl. One that you don't use for actual food. You're gonna wait for your wax to start developing a film on the top so it's starting to harden. In the meantime, get your piping bag and icing tip ready because once you put the wax inside of there, it's gonna move fast and it starts hardening quickly. So you can see here, I have that little film on top. So now I can start mixing. If you're mixing and it's not getting thicker, you just wait for the wax to cool down a little bit more and then continue mixing because you're looking for it to look like thick mashed potatoes. Now scoop your wax inside of the piping bag and start piping out 
the wax and once you start squeezing do not stop because if you stop the wax hardens pretty much immediately inside of the icing tip and then you have to start over you have to get a new icing tip so once you start squeezing just keep going so I did a little whipped cream type of look around my little pie then I got these wax melts from Dollar Tree I'm using a potato peeler to just grate it down and then I'm gonna sprinkle that on top of the wax again I'm using one that I don't actually use for food so that is how I made this candle that is like technically for Easter like I said but you can just do the exact same thing to make a pumpkin pie candle. Anyways, that is it for all these fall DIYs. I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know your favorite down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.